Rub up your engines! Milkshake says, do you like Jeeps? Well, I like the idea of Jeeps. I love the early Willys Jeeps, the ones, you know, wartime, simple. But of course, then they got bought out by American Motors and American Motors went out of business and Chrysler bought them. And the only reason Chrysler bought them was to get the name Jeep. Then they started to go downhill and then Fiat bought Chrysler and they went even further downhill and now Stellantis owns Chrysler and Jeep. They're making Jeeps in Italy that have nothing to do with Jeeps, but they call them Jeeps because the company owns them, but they're all made in Italy with Fiat engines and they're absolute rolling piles of junk. So I don't like the new ones whatsoever. The old ones I think are cool, especially if you're going off road and going out in the woods and stuff. But you look at the Jeeps, they're SUVs, but they say Jeep. They're not Jeeps, they're just an SUV. And they just use the name Jeep and stick it on an SUV. So it has nothing to do with what originally was just like Ford with their Mustang uh, electric car, right? They call it a Mustang. It's not a Mustang. It's an electric SUV. It has nothing to do with Mustang, the name, and the same thing with Jeep. Nine millimeter preacher says, <laughs> that's a good name. Scotty, would you buy an 09 Ram 4th, 119,793 miles? I would if it was in good shape. I'd get my big scan tool, hook it up, drive it around, see if it's been wrecked, let it stolen, go through a whole bunch of tests. For 2009, that's relatively low mileage, and they can go with three, four, five, 500,000 miles, but you do have to get them checked out by a guy like me because there's so many things that can go wrong in what? That's 15 year old car, right? Who knows what's happened in the last 15 years? Trust the mechanic like me to look at it and say, okay, the oil wasn't changed. Or, oh no, it was changed. It's in good shape. Don't just gamble. Don't just throw your money out in a used car that old without having a guy check it out. Goodman 4527 says, Scott, he got 2004 runner 4x4. Four four. It vibrates and shakes 60 to 70. The J shifter shakes with the vibration. Above it doesn't go. What do you think? It's shifting at that miles per hour. Now you say the shifter shaking like mad. Now, if your steering wheel isn't shaking like mad, it's not the tires. Because if it's the tires, the steering wheel will be shaking, right? You say it's the shifter that's shaking. So that tells me that one of two things is going on. And pray it's the first thing. The first thing is something in your drive shaft, a worn drive shaft, bent drive shaft, bad joint. And and it's making it wobble at that speed and make the gear shifter shake, right? You want to pray it's that because if it's not that, it means your transmission's wearing out inside the gears. And then when they get to a certain speed, it starts shaping the gear shifter. So pray it's that. Just a worn out joint or bent shaft or something. Have a good mechanic check that out first. Pray it's not internal to the transmission because transmission work costs a fortune. Rolando Duran says, after replacing a clutch with a brand new kit, is it necessary to come back after running for some miles to have it readjusted? Not in modern vehicles. Now, back in the day, you might have had to because we had cable clutches or just a plain old line clutch where there's metal, metal, and it pushes it in. Most of them were cables. You'd step on, there was a cable, and the cable could need readjusting. They're all hydraulic practically today. The hydraulic ones adjust themselves, just like your car's brakes. One of the main reasons they went to hydraulic brakes was because they're self-adjusting. The old mechanical ones, you had to readjust them all the time, and it was a pain in the butt. It made money for mechanics and caused a lot of wrecks because people who were cheap didn't adjust them. Their brakes wouldn't work right, and then smash them up. Now it's all hydraulic, and they adjust itself. So most with hydraulics, you don't need to do anything. You put it in, and you drive. You're probably going to notice the clutch will hit at a different point because now it's a new clutch. You get used to that. You don't need to readjust anything if the guy did it right. Don P says, Scotty, does highly concentrated graphene ceramic coating actually help retain and enhance a vehicle's paint job or is it snake oil? All right. Now, there's so many different ceramic coatings out there, and a lot of them are total snake oil, right? A guy came here last year in Tennessee, and he said, Scotty, I agree with most of the stuff you say. He said, but I used this ceramic coating. I wish I remember the name of it. And he said, it actually worked. I looked at his car, and it was beautiful, right? But the guy's a professional detailer. And I said, how long did it take you to totally apply all this ceramic coating and he told me it was like 12 hour job he clean it he put some on he clean he put some on it took him days and it did look really good most guys that get it in a bottle they squirt it on they wipe it on it's not going to do diddly squat if it's applied by a pro there's certain ones that actually do work but don't think you're getting a little bottle and 
Squirt it on, wipe it off, and think it's going to really do something. Come on, let's be logical here. Steve Michelle says, Scotty, do you recommend any GMC or Chevy SUVs? GMC ones are generally better made if you're getting the bigger ones because they just have a little bit better quality control in their factories from what I've seen. Now, if you were talking about big work trucks, I would say go ahead and get a GMC 25 or 3500. They're well made. I mean, those things can go and go and go. I personally wouldn't buy Chevys at all. The big GMC trucks, I would. As for Chevy SUVs, there's one out there I'd buy. I wouldn't buy any of them. The quality control is garbage. They just aren't that good. Peter Finlay says, Scotty, what's your opinion of engine cleaning by three oil and filter changes every 500 miles? I can see it won't hurt anything, but it really clean the sludge. All right. Well, most sludge doesn't really exist in cars today because we're using what's called detergent oil. And the detergent keeps the sludge in suspension. So unless somebody really crapped out a car and never changed the oil, you're not going to get too much sludge. But you keep doing that, and it will clean it somewhat. But if you really wanted to clean out the sludge, what you would do would be you'd get engine oil flush. Go to the auto parts store, right? Get an engine oil flush. Follow the directions. It'll say, like empty a quart of oil out, put the stuff in, run it for 20, 30 minutes in a the driveway, then immediately change the oil and filter, and that will get the sludge out. That's a much better way of getting sludge out. Keith Thompson says, Scotty, what do you think of diesel oil in a gas engine? Will it help or hurt? Thoughts? No, it hurt. Don't do it. Now, for those of you who don't know, gasoline engines have certain specifications for their engine oil. Diesel engines have completely different specifications. So, when you see this is a diesel oil, it's made for diesel engines. And if it's just a regular oil, it's made for gas gasoline engines. And you're not supposed to mix them. Now, it's not going to blow up. I've seen people that are stuck in out in the desert or something, and they need oil, and all there is is diesel oil for diesel. They put it in. It'll go okay. I mean, you just don't want to make a practice of it, because the diesel oils have a higher pressure. They run differently. And if you know anything about fuel, diesel is slimy. It's kind of a lubricant, where gasoline is very caustic, and it's a cleaner. So, it washes stuff off engine parts. That's why you don't want to get oil dilution in a gasoline engine, where diesel fuel is not nearly as bad. It can actually lubricate. So, you don't want to mix the two. Keep gasoline, oil, and gasoline engines, and diesel oil and diesel engines. Unless, you know, you're stuck in the middle of nowhere, and you, oil or no oil, you're going to blow your engine, go ahead and put it in. It's not going to destroy it right away. Over time, though, it wouldn't work correctly. Jimmy Beans 88 says, Scotty, I have the dreaded Lean Bank 1 code on a 4.0 Nissan Frontier. Where do I start? Okay. You got one side of the engine running lean. So, the first thing, check for vacuum leaks on that side of the engine, right? Let's say you got low fuel pressure, right? If you got low fuel pressure, both banks are going to be lean. If you have a problem with the mass air flow sensor, both banks are going to be lean, right? Because there's only one sensor and it feeds the whole car. It's got to be something that's unique to only one side of the engine. You got a V6 engine and only the bank one is running lean. That's what you want to hope. I mean, if you really had one bad fuel injector, it was only on bank one, that could make it run lean. If it wasn't spraying, it would make it run lean. Now, what you can do just for a quickie is bank one, pull out all the spark plugs, and bank two, pull out all the spark plugs, and look at them. If bank one, you see one cylinder spark plug is black and the other aren't, you know that injector is bad and it's leaking in. Or if you see one that's white and the rest are normal colored, you know there's a problem in that cylinder. Try to pinpoint it. Is it all three on that side or just one? It's got to be something that affects that side, not the other. Luke Godwin said, what's the best year for a used Corolla? Well, the one that you find with the least miles for the best price. They all are pretty good. None of them had any particular problems, right? How much do you want to spend and how many miles are you going to be willing to buy for? And what's the price? That's what it comes down to. You know, you find one that's got 100,000 miles on it and it's four grand or five grand or something. It might be a decent vehicle. But maybe you can find an older one that's got less mileage for the same price or less. Go for that. They don't have any particularly bad years. The main thing is, have a mechanic like me check it out. Because <laughs> one could be two years old and had been in wrecks and it's a pile of junk. One could be 15 years old and still got tons of life left in it. So, don't ever trust anybody who's selling cars. I had a guy selling a Corolla to a guy when I was in Houston. He bought it in an auction in Dallas and he drove it to Houston. And he brought it to the, my house to check it out for my customer. And the guy was there. And I said, look, I don't want to make a fool out of you, buddy, but you bought a wrecked car. Oh, no, it's never been wrecked. It didn't have anything in a car fix, right? And I said, look, here's your radiator. 
supposed to be black plastic. It was a white car. It had white paint over spray. And I jacked it up and said, look, all the under plastic covers are gone. They've been ripped off from being in a wreck. I said, this thing's been in a massive wreck. So don't tell me it's never been wrecked. Guy was nuts enough. He went from Houston to Dallas, bought a car at an auction in Dallas, drove it to Houston, and then was trying to sell it to somebody else. So you got to be leery about those things. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.